So can I ask you a question? Because so far I haven't um, called anybody yet. I'm still going through the videos and I'm still under training. Okay. So the tags, so I know there's tags underneath the name that showcase okay. what happened. Hello? Can you hear me? Oh, sorry. Hello? It sounded like someone had answered. That's why I just wanted, I just want I, I didn't want to be rude, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no worries. It was just dead so, air. I don't, know, I don't know if it went to voicemail and it just, I don't know what happened there. Okay, so go ahead, finish what you were saying. So the taglines and the tags underneath the name provide content that you can use for the phone. And this content does not make it sound salesy. Like when you say, oh, I noticed you looked at a housing two months ago yep. and then continue it on. So that's building some sort of context that allows yeah. the rapport to build. Is that, is that the main benefit of you know, having all these things tracked? Yes, because mm -hmm. the reality is, you know, the, the, the biggest complaint that I hear from anyone that's calling leads is everyone is just looking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So I always return that complaint to, okay, well, when you go into a retail store and the sales mm -hmm. clerk says, is there anything I can help you with? what do you say? Do you, do you say just looking or do looking. you tell them what they're looking for? So if I follow up with, well, awesome. I'm so glad you came in today. If you were to make a purchase today, what would it be for business, casual, or special occasion? Special occasion. Oh my gosh, where are you going? Mm -hmm. Business. What do you do? Casual. Well, cool. What, what do you like to hang out in? Like, like when you're just hanging around the house, what, what, what's your normal attire? Mm -hmm. That way we need to be really focused on being great question askers because then you're controlling the conversation and building that rapport, just like you said. Mm -hmm. People love to talk if you can ask the right questions and open them up. Everyone loves to brag about themselves. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people say, Bev, give me your scripts. I, I don't focus on scripts because the one thing that I absolutely learned on script minded people and great googly moogly, call Sirius XM radio, call an insurance company. They are so stuck on script. If you try to have a conversation with them, they don't know how. Mm. And if you're focused on what you're supposed to be saying next, you're not paying attention to what they're really saying. Mm -hmm. So going into a conversation, knowing I'm not attached to the outcome. Heck yes, I, I would like settlements and heck yes, I would like to get a buyer in my car or a, a listing appointment. However, we can never make anybody move. It has to be a convenient time for them and something has to happen in their life for that move to happen. Have you bought a house before? No. What One about day, your pretty soon I will, but not, not yet, no. What, what about your parents? Yeah, they have. Okay. The last time you moved with your parents, why did they decide to move when they moved? Um, the area and okay. the fact that it's a three bedroom. So they needed um, a, a larger home? They needed a lar larger home. They needed more space. Um, just the fact that the house was close to the, ho the hospital, the mall. So just the location wise was really good as well. Yep. And it was renovated too. So. Yep. So they needed a larger home. A larger, a larger, and the a larger only home. thing that makes a transaction happen is it is. It makes, why am I echoing? Why am I echoing? I don't know why you're echoing. <laughs> I don't know which side it's on. I think I stopped. Did I stop echoing? Okay. Yeah. I can't think when I can hear myself. Uh, <laughs> the only thing that makes a transaction happen is it meets the buyer's expectation. So if we go back and we look at your parents when they went to make that move, they needed something larger. They mm -hmm. wanted to be in, it sounds like a more convenient location. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking to a lead, what's mm -hmm. more important to you? Is it timing? Is it the exact right property at the right price? And they may see all the above and say, okay, what has to happen for us to make this move happen for you? And that's when you get the real truth out of people because they'll be like, well, my son has to graduate or my wife has to get a job or that's when you start peeling back the layers of the onion and start finding out what the situation is. And that's why it's so important once you have the conversation with the lead that you know what to do with them.
-hmm. And I was just in a training yesterday. Um, Caroline is part of our VIP and, and we did, we did our meeting yesterday and she had uh, out of 262 leads. I think she had 130 ish that were moved to contacted and there was she had to open up every single profile to look at notes to determine what the heck was going on with a particular lead. Mm -hmm. I like to look at a dashboard, having systems and go, okay, if you're in a contacted stage, I promise you this will happen. You have a great conversation with somebody and they're like, you know what? I have been in my house for 20 years. I have so much stuff that I have to get rid of in my house before I can even think about making a move. I am probably at least six months out. You had a great conversation with this person. They want to receive emails. You task them and then they just get lost because it's not a high priority because then we start focusing on the new leads that are coming in. So at that point, we could tag somebody to exactly why she's making a move. Is she downsizing? Is she retiring? Is she relocating? What is the reason for that move? So we move her to contacted and then we can watch the people that are in there because we're only looking at five, 10, 15, 20 leads instead of all 400 or all, in her case, all 130. And that's why we don't like to do tasks because you have to click on the lead, mm -hmm. read, the, read the notes and then make the phone call and it takes so long. Or like with these, I can just whip through my dials because I never spoke to you. Mm -hmm. So that's the whole premise of the tagging mm -hmm. is it helps us ask better questions because if you get off the phone and you don't know what to do with her or him, you're like, oh, now I don't know what to do. I don't know where to put them in the aisle of the store or even what shelf to put them on. So then, then you have product in the store that doesn't make it to the shelf and it doesn't get sold. Does that make sense? 